In this video, I will show you how to make a birthday list app, which will teach you how to integrate data from Google Sheets into your MIT App Inventor apps. The finished product will show a list of names and birthdays, and when one is selected, it will show more information about the birthday person. This is not an easy app to build, so if you aren't feeling super comfortable with the App Inventor interface yet, I suggest you try some of the other tutorials first. However, using a database outside of App Inventor can be really useful for profiles, passwords, and anything else you need to keep track of. Okay, so just start by making a new project, which I've called mine Birthdays, and we'll need a label for the title. And I'm going to make that a little bigger, and the text for it will be just the heading Birthdays. And underneath that, we'll need a list view to show the list of birthdays. Um, I'm just going to change the background color to white and the text to magenta to make it a little prettier than the white on black, which it is set to by default. And then after that, you'll need to go under connectivity and get this thing here, which is called web. And it has the little image of the globe. So just add that in, and it will appear down here under non-visible components. All right, so let's take a look at web's properties. So it has allow cookies, response file name, save response, and URL. Um, I'm not going to show you how to use these three up here because it's not super important, but the URL is what we're going to use to get the data from the Google Sheet into the list view. So let's hop over to this Google Sheet I've made and I'll call it birthdays and let's have a name column and a birthday column. So I'll just paste in some data that I've already made, just some random names and some random birthdays. So to get that URL for web, go under share and you can see right now it's only to me and we need to change that. So we'll need to get a shareable link and then I need to change this so that anybody can view it. So anyone with the link right there. So go ahead and click the copy button, copy this link and unfortunately, we can't paste it directly into the URL box. We need to edit it a little bit first. All right, so I'll just paste it here. And let's see, it says docs.google.com, spreadsheets, all these numbers and letters, which will lead you to that specific sheet. And then at the end, it says edit question mark USB equals sharing. So we're going to have to change that to export question mark format equals CSV in order to allow web one from App Inventor to use it. So export question mark format equals CSV. All right, so let's copy that link and let's see what happens if we actually go to this link. So it doesn't go to a new tab from the internet, but what it does is it downloads the CSV file which contains all the information we need. So there it has the name and the birthday. Perfect. All right. So since I copied that before, I can just paste that into the URL box here and make sure that it says export question mark format equals CSV at the end. All right. So let's hop into blocks. So the first thing you'll need to do is grab when screen one dot initialize. So as soon as the app is opened. And then under web one, we need to call web one dot get. And that's going to get all the data from the URL that we just entered. So when web one has got the text, we need to do something with response content here. Now, response content isn't a list, so we can't just set list views data to, or elements, 
to response content, we need to change it a little bit first. So I'm going to make a new variable called table. Um, and I'll just set that to an empty list. And then in here, I'll set the table to list from CSV table. And then the text here will be response content. So what this is going to do is it's going to change response content into the list format so that we can add it into global table. So the table variable. Now, if you remember from the little demo I did at the beginning, the list view showed the name of the person and their birthday. So I'm going to make a new variable again called, um, I'll just call it birthdays, and that will be another empty list. And then I'm going to make a new procedure called format. And this is going to format the list, so the list meaning table, it's going to format table into birthdays to get the correct thing that we want to put in our list view. All right, and I have to call format, so I'll just put that there. All right, so what actually goes into table is multiple things. So first there's a list of name and birthday, then there's a list which has Sophie and that date, then Alexis and her birthday, and so on and so on. So it's a list of lists. That's what gets put into table. So the first thing in that list is actually going to be row one, which is name and birthday, but we don't really want that to be in our list view. So the first thing I'm gonna do here is remove list item list and index. So that list is going to be the table and the index will be one. So that first line of the table. And then after that, I'm going to use a for loop for each item in the list. All right, so this list is going to be the table again. All right, so let's think a little bit about what item is going to be here. So since table is now a list of lists, not including that first row with name or birthday. So when we say item, we mean a pair which is going to have name and the birthday. So let's add that pair to what I call birthdays up here in a maybe a formatted way for our list view. So add items to list. The list is going to be birthdays and the item is going to be this text which we're going to join a bunch of things together. So the first thing we're going to put in there is just the name. So select list item list index and the list is going to be item now. And the index for the name is one. And then in the middle, I'm going to put a slash n. So what the slash n does is it's a new line. So it's going to have the name, and then it will create a new line, which is like pressing an enter or a return on the keyboard. And then we'll have maybe something else underneath it. So let's add one more thing, which will be the date. So I'll just duplicate this one and make this index two, which will be the birthday. So now we have everything in birthdays. 
let's put that into the list view. So we'll set the elements to birthdays. All right, and let's see how that works. Looks like it worked. So we have our list view and we have all the names and birthdays and each element of the list view has the name and then underneath that, so that's where the new line came in handy, we have the date. Hmm, but nothing really happens when you try to select one. So maybe let's change our app to make it a little more interesting. Okay, so let's go back to Google Sheets and I'm going to make a new column called favorite thing. Oops. Favorite thing. So the idea here is that maybe you want to surprise them on their birthday with their favorite thing. So again, I've just made some random things um, to use as data here. So back to MIT Admin Matter. So we don't have to change the URL, which is nice. It'll save that update. And while we're at it, I'm just going to change the list view text size um, to be a little bigger because it was kind of small when we tested it. All right, so back to the blocks. So the way we're going to show what the favorite thing is is on a different screen. So I'm going to add a screen um, called person, the birthday person. So we want to open this new screen once we've selected something in the list view. So let's go to list view after picking and then under control, open a new screen with start value. So the screen name is just going to be person and the start value is going to be the list that has the name, the birthday, and the favorite thing at the index that was selected by list view. So let's see where that is. Here we go, list view dot selection index. And then the list that has that is the table. So we're going to select that item using this block here. So now we're opening the person screen and giving them the starting value of the specific list from the table. All right, so what do we need to put in this person screen? I'm just going to add a label for the name and a label for the message and a back button. So over to blocks. when this screen is initialized, we're going to have to change the text for these labels. Actually, we can change the back button's text right now. There we go. But we can't say right now what the name and message are gonna be. That will depend on what the selection was. So under control, you'll see get start value, and that is the list which has the name, the birthday, and the favorite thing. So let's set the text for name first. There it is. So start value is a list, and we want the first thing in the list. So that will have index one. 
All right, so we've got the name, and let's set the message also. Uh, and I think I'll have to do a little bit of formatting on this one also. So I wanted to say, um, so-and-so's birthday is on this date, and their favorite thing is this. So let's start off with a name again. And then, apostrophe S, birthday is on. And then I'll add another string. For the date, so someone says birthday is on this date. Don't forget her favorite thing is. And then the favorite thing is in the third column. And then maybe let's just add an exclamation point. Okay, and then we have to put some code into that back button. So when the back button is clicked, um, we want to go to a different screen name. So just back to that screen one. All right, and let's test that. Okay, so here's our list of birthdays and yay, now the text is big enough to read. All right, so now when I click on Alexis, it shows her name and some information about her birthday and her favorite thing. So I hope this was helpful for some of you who are struggling maybe to get enough data into App Inventor from only the lists. But as you can see, using Google Sheets to get that URL into web and using that to get your data into maybe a list view is not too bad. So thank you for watching.